An old but simple form of memory allocation is fixed partitioning, in which memory is divided into a preset number of chunks of fixed sizes. Here's an example of memory divided into several equal size partitions. This is a small memory divided into chunks of 8 megabytes each. The first chunk is reserved for the operating system, but the others can be filled by other processes. Here we see the memory addresses labeled in terms of the megabyte starting point. I'm going to indicate how much of a given partition is filled in by coloring it in with this marker. As you see, we can have processes of various sizes. We could have a small process occupying this partition, and then another process could come in that's fairly large and occupies the majority of a partition. And each process is confined to its own partition and can easily address its own memory contents. Now, if we have lots of small processes, we will quickly reach a point where we have no more partitions in which we can place processes. That is a problem with this approach. There's lots of free memory left, but no more available partitions. This free remaining space is known as fragmentation, and specifically, this type of free space is known as internal fragmentation. Internal fragmentation is what we call it when space within a reserved partition is unused. It is internal to that partition, and the entirety of the partition belongs to a specific process, but that process is not using that space, hence it causes fragmentation. Now, if we wanted to load a process that was too big for one of our partitions, we could technically do it if we had some very clever programming that recognized that we had one partition that was fully occupied by the first part of our process and a portion of another partition occupied by the remaining portion of our process. But this is a programming nightmare that we generally want to avoid. And so we look for other solutions. An alternative version of fixed partitioning that somewhat solves this issue is to simply have different partitions of unequal size, as shown here. In this partitioning scheme, we still reserve 8 megabytes at the beginning of memory for the operating system, but the remainder of memory is split into partitions of different sizes. If we get a small process, it makes more sense to put it in this very small partition rather than to put it in one of the larger partitions. If we get a process that is larger than 8 megabytes, which this system could not handle, we can put it in either the 10 megabyte or 16 megabyte partition, depending on how large it is. Now, we still can't handle any processes larger than 16 megabytes, and additionally, if we have two processes that are, let's say, 15 megabytes, we could only handle one of them. So this system does not solve all of our problems, but it is much more flexible than the previous one here. In particular, if I put large processes in the large partitions, and I put smaller processes in the smaller partitions, then in general, I will tend to have less overall fragmentation across my memory. The main problem with this scheme, though, is that these partition boundaries are fixed. The next video in this sequence will talk about dynamic partitioning, where the boundaries between partitions are dynamically assigned.